Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be continue our experimentation with carbon dioxide on our planet earth and take a look at what happens if actually, well, what if we smarten out and stop releasing carbon dioxide right now? What will happen to our planet and its atmosphere? Let's find out and welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So here we're going to be using the climate simulation in Universe Sandbox Square and we're going to be looking at the greenhouse gases right here. Um, in the previous part of the CO2 exploration or CO2 experiments, we've taken a look at um, one of the RCP scenarios, also known as representative concentration pathway scenarios, where we actually use a scenario uh, known as RCP 8.5. This one is the extreme scenario when we actually assume that humans do not smarten out, do not stop releasing CO2 and keep releasing it until we all die and as you may have learned from the previous video in like thousand, over a thousand years we'll reach the level of CO2 when you can no longer breathe which is you know kind of scary but let's just say that we're, uh, we're not going to be using this one 2.6 this assumes that um, by 2020 the human race smartens out finds a way to stop releasing so much CO2 and uh, basically uh, starts to uh, use uh, renewable energy or energy that doesn't actually uh, use fossil fuels and in other words we're going to stop releasing CO2. Now to do this let's actually go into the uh, new simulation we're going to click on the climate simulation right here pause the game and enter the simulation here known as RCP 2.6. All right, here we go. And we're also going to be starting this scenario from, uh, I guess, 2017. So let's uh, go to 2017, which is the year when I'm making this video. We're going to basically enter the realistic parameters here uh, under carbon dioxide. Uh, I'm currently looking at the website known as CO2.Earth and it's telling me that the current PPMV is 406. So PPMV is going to be 406. That means that there's about 858 um, billion ton of carbon carbon dioxide in our atmosphere. And we're going to use, instead of using the scenario, let's actually do this manually, just so you can actually learn how this works. We're going to be increasing the uh, CO2 at about 2.3 billion tons of carbon per year which is quite realistic for that scenario that we chose and the deposition rate which basically is the removal of carbon dioxide from atmosphere uh, due to like for example absor absorption from trees absorption from various um, marine organisms like algae that actually use CO2 for breathing but specifically here we're talking about the uh, carbon cycle essentially so reabsorption of CO2 the rate for that is 1.2. Now, this rate is actually dropping, and that's because um, things are changing on our planet. Forests, like for example, rainforests in Brazil are being destroyed. Uh, forests in North America are also kind of slowly deteriorating. So for the most part, this will actually drop, but we're going to stop the emission in 2020. We're actually going to change this to zero and going to assume that people stop releasing carbon dioxide. We somehow find a way to live carbon neutrally. And we're going to be looking at the surface temperature here and a lot of other parameters as well. So let's run this for three years. Maybe I'll run this a little bit slower. Um, we're going to emit um, carbon dioxide until 2020 and suddenly something happens. Maybe a new president gets uh, elected or UN starts doing some kind of a um, interesting change in the world. And this changes to zero. So now we have zero emissions. Uh, the position rate will stay at 1.2, but we're actually going to slowly decrease it every five years. And we're going to decrease it by about, I don't know, like maybe one or two percent because uh, the forests are still going to be disappearing. So, you know, it's not going to be a perfect world just yet. So let's start running this. So every few years, I'm going to pause this and maybe decrease this by like a little bit just so that we actually represent this whole deforestation slash destruction of various plant life on our planet. So um, I'm going to run this until about 2040 or so, 2050, and then we're going to check the local temperature, we're going to check the average temperature on our planet, and we're going to take a look at uh, how the uh, climate has changed in these 20, 30, 40 years. So 
let's just keep running this. We're, you know, even though we're not releasing any more CO2, we're still kind of cutting down the trees, still using up a lot of the um, areas around the world that would actually be absorbing the carbon dioxide and possibly even creating more deserts. So, um, deforestation and also desertification are some of the really, really big problems nowadays. And they are actually causing this rate to go down. Maybe not as dramatically as I'm doing it here, but quite dramatically nevertheless. So um, let's actually just maybe wait until, let's just say 2040, 2045. Let's stop at 2045. Um, I'm going to be pretty old by then. Probably won't really care about things as much as I do now. But nevertheless, you know, you, you need to care about the environment. So um, at this point, the carbon dioxide level actually has dropped to below what it was um, maybe in 2014. It's at 397 uh, right now, 396. And it's still dropping because obviously the trees and other um, things around our planet are reabsorbing all of this carbon dioxide that was released. Now, here's the thing, though. It will take quite a long, long time. As a matter of fact, over 100 years for us to reach the levels where we were pre-industrial era. So let's actually stop at 2050, right around maybe next year. And here we go, 2050. So I'm going to make this into a graph that I'm going to be showing you right here with basically um, the PPMV value, which refers to the parts per million of volume of carbon dioxide uh, on our planet Earth. And you'll see that it's, it's slowly dropping, but the pre-industrial level, or actually even the level in the early 1900s was 277. That's how low it was. It was 277. This was the carbon dioxide level for thousands and thousands of years until we started to release it dramatically into our atmosphere. So if we keep going this way, and even if we change the reabsorption back to 1.2, which I think maybe I'll do right now, just to make this a little bit more accurate and a little bit more fair, even at this reabsorption rate, let's see how long it will actually take us to um, regain the same level of carbon dioxide as what we had pr um, prior to the Industrial Revolution and prior to the 20th century. So you can see that the temperature here is fluctuating, but maybe not increasing as much as it was, especially in the last video. But the PPMV level is dropping, but not dropping fast enough. So right now we can actually extrapolate um, how long this will take us. So we currently are decreasing this at 1.2 per year, and we need to get to a level of um, about 277. So we actually need to lose about 100 uh, of PPMV. This means that it's going to take us close to about 90 years of no carbon emission whatsoever, zero carbon emission for us to reabsorb everything back to where it was. Now, it doesn't really mean that we need to do it. It's not absolutely essential that we reabsorb all of the carbon for us to survive. But we are still releasing quite a lot of carbon. This is not zero, right? This is actually, as a matter of fact, this, this value was a 2.4. We're still releasing a lot of carbon right now. The carbon is being released pretty much every single day. In other words, the PPMV value and the carbon dioxide value in our atmosphere is continuously increasing even today. So even right now, this value is um, close to a double of the deposition value. And even though the deposition value is actually slowly dropping, it's actually decreasing due to things like deforestation, this is increasing because more and more countries are continuously um, using fossil fuels. Uh, many countries actually switched back to fossil fuels from using things like nuclear energy. And a lot of other countries are kind of ignoring this whole carbon dioxide thing. So it's very likely that uh, this scenario that we use, the RCAP scenario known as 2.6, is not very realistic. It's very unlikely that we're going to be stopping the carbon dioxide emissions by 2020. It's very likely that this value will continuously keep going up, maybe not as fast as it was, but definitely going up um, just as fast as it was doing for the past um, 20 or 30 years. In other words, um, we're going to be increasing PPMV value by about five to six every two or three years. So it's actually quite a scary thought that this, this number is going to be going up higher and higher every single year. 
Now, just to kind of show you again, if I were to start a simulation and if I were to right away remove the emission rate completely and just leave the deposition rate, basically reabsorption of carbon dioxide, even with this value, it would still take us at least a good 100 or actually 120 years to uh, return back to the values of pre-industrial era. So let me show you how long it would actually take. We're going to look at this um, and change this to 277 manually. Well, not manually, but basically by running the simulation for like 100 years. And let's see when it actually becomes 277. And the year is close to 2200, and we're about to reach that magic number of 277. It took quite a long while to get there. And this is, of course, with zero emissions of carbon dioxide. Now, what this tells us is that our release of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere was so dramatic that it actually would take longer for us to now get rid of it from the atmosphere, unless we find a technique or some sort of a technology that can do it faster. So maybe we need to slow down with this whole carbon dioxide thing and think about what we're actually doing. Why? Well, because what planet do we know that has an extreme carbon dioxide with extreme greenhouse effect? Hmm, let me think for a second. Maybe Venus? With its carbon dioxide atmosphere, ridiculously high pressure, and the temperature of, what? 474 degrees Celsius? Yeah, no thank you. Don't think I would like to enjoy living on, on such a world. And anyway, hopefully you learned something from this video, and hopefully now you know how screwed we are if we don't stop this whole carbon dioxide thing. Hopefully we'll figure this out sooner than later, and hopefully it won't really affect us that much, and hopefully we won't turn our Earth into another Venus. But because this is Universe Sandbox, why don't, why don't we actually do just that? Why, why don't we just go in here and give our Earth ridiculously high atmosphere and a ridiculously high temperature, and then see what happens to our beautiful planet. Anyway, if you've enjoyed watching this video, don't forget to subscribe and consider supporting this channel on Patreon as well. Share this video with someone who enjoys watching these videos and who wants to learn through video games. And most importantly, come back tomorrow because we're going to do something completely different and you're going to learn something else about universe, space, or maybe do some math. Or maybe we'll just play a video game. Who knows, right? Anyway, here we go. Temperature is going to increase any second now. And we're about to turn our beautiful planet into a steaming bowl of magma, I guess because it's going to be ridiculously hot here. And here we go with the first disappearance of oceans and very likely disappearance of the entire liquid water on the planet. It's going to happen any second now and you're going to see what all of this will look like as soon as uh, our temperature is over 200 degrees Celsius. And now for the next part, we're going to basically turn this into a superheated bowl of magma. And now that there's no water left on our planet, we're basically are going to have no plate tectonics and the carbon dioxide cycle will actually uh, decrease even less, releasing even more carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, making this number actually much, much higher. And thus increasing the temperature even further. So all in all, the temperature here would probably be something along the lines of 500 degrees Celsius which might actually even turn our planet something that looks like this. It might actually become a fiery world with liquid magma on the surface. Or maybe not. Anyway, see you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye.